Brett. Oh. <laughs> Hello, everybody. This is uh, Brett Davis with Brett Davis Unleashed. Uh, we are talking with Rohan from uh, Scotland. How are you doing? I'm well, thanks. Fantastic. And you're uh, a dentist or orthodontist? I, I'm a dentist, yeah. Okay, great. And then uh, we'll go around the room and you'll know everybody. Of course, you know some of the people here already, but we'll just do it for people that are just uh, tuning in. Hey, Fernand. This is uh, Crystal Balk, uh, our, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> this is Sarah Morga. And this is uh, Daniel Martinez. So how uh, we appreciate you taking the time. Uh, it's a, what an eight eight hour difference from from San Diego. Yeah, yeah it's uh, nine o'clock in the evening in Scotland. Yeah. Oh wow! So what have you what have you uh, noticed with what's going on with the current times and uh, the coronavirus? What's going on in uh, Scotland right now? And which part well, of Scotland? And what part of Scotland are you from? So I, I live and I was born in Glasgow which is the west coast of Scotland, which is part of the United Kingdom. And so, yeah, things have really dramatically taken a turn in recent days. Uh, It's got real, you know, it's it's really hitting home the magnitude of what's going on. It all started back in December, and we were aware of it in the media, that this disease was present in China, but it's on our doorstep. On our doorstep, it's reality. And I think today there were 44 deaths in the UK, and we have over 5,000 positive uh, diagnoses of of the coronavirus. How so many? How many? I'm sorry. How many? Over 5,000. Wow. Okay. And 200 and. Forty-four deaths. How many deaths? So Three forty-five. Uh, Two. And in, in what area? In in the United Kingdom, so it's a population of around sixty million. Okay. But we we have to remember this disease has an incubation period of somewhere in the region of seven to seven to fourteen days, and and if you if you follow the situation in Italy. We are following a similar trajectory, and they've had at over 4,000 deaths, more deaths than they had in China. So we're really worried, and we've seen a lot of a lot of uh, sort of measures being put in by the government. So we're not on lockdown, but we've been advised to stay indoors, and all public restaurants. Cafes, leisure centres have all been shut. Now, I'm a dentist, and we've basically been informed to work just to to provide an emergency service for our patients, because this is is going to get bad over here. And I think that's that's actually smart because you don't want to infect yourselves either, you know, as a dentist. I mean, you're right there. You're you're handling the individual, you know, um, face to face, and um, yeah. So I think yeah. I so, think yeah, have... I, 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 absolutely, and I think there's evidence that we as dental clinicians we're at very high risk because we're working in such close proximity with patients. Yeah, and it starts in the, the throat. This disease. Uh, yeah, absolutely, and and the fact is, this disease has an incubation period, so you would be treating patients that would not be symptomatic, right? And you completely unaware, and you could catch the disease. And the other thing is, unfortunately, there's not enough supply of adequate protection equipment for 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 for, for ourselves as clinicians and our staff, so we're not even able to protect ourselves against the disease. So yeah, we're we're worried. The profession, the dental profession, is very worried, and uh, and the real worry is that we've not seen the worst of this yet. No, you know, over the next seven to fourteen days, we'll really know how bad this is. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I should also say I'm also a medical doctor, and I've been I've been requested by the governing body 
to reinstate my registration as a medical doctor because they feel that they'll need me to come into work and work as a medical doctor. Well, God bless there's you. there's a real shortage. Yeah. How long would that take for you to do that? Oh, they'll be able to give me registration immediately if they need me. Oh, wow. That's a great skill to have to be able to adapt. Um, maybe that's another way of currently looking at where our lives are going. Maybe this is a time where we can't just be specialists. We have to be adaptable and have maybe a backup plan where we have services or things, yeah, other things we can do. Because I don't think this thing, um, I don't even know how to describe the whole yeah. thing. But, I mean, I think we need to be, I mean, we have to be able to do varieties of different things, I think. Absolutely spot on. You know, we've got to remember, I've got other colleagues that are dentists and now they're really not working. They're not working, they've no income. And a lot of people are going to realize that, oh, look, I've devoted my life to this career. I've been told I can't work as a dentist. What am I going to do? And people need to realize, that actually, we need other skills, other life skills, maybe may a different profession, but other skills. And as individuals, we need to be adaptable. I'm fortunate. I studied dentistry and I studied medicine, so I can flip between the two. But a lot of people haven't, don't have that uh, skill to, to kind of fall back on. So a lot of people, I feel, are going to realize that you know it's important that they have other skills, they have other income streams that aren't just dependent on their job, because a lot of people have been made made redundant or told they don't have a job or told they cannot work. So it's important to have a, a alternative a streams of income. And the other thing I sort of reflected on recently is also very important to live well within your within our means. I, I'm speaking to a lot of colleagues, and they're really worried that they don't have enough reserves in the bank or or money saved up in investment to support themselves for more than one or two months. And we need to look at that because. Look, nobody expected this to happen, and now we've been told that we're probably not going to be working for the next two to three months. Next two to three months, no income, but we still got to pay our mortgage. We still got to, you know, support our families. We still got cars to pay. So yeah, a difficult time for many people. Yeah, for everybody everywhere around the world, which is the crazy part. Now, Fernand, when you and I met, um, it was only two months ago in the UK uh, for a business conference, and you were doing excellent. You were helping other um, dentists, uh, getting up their practice up and running, and you will have your practice yourselves. How s- has this impacted um, your business uh, and also all those people that you were helping out? Um, do they also have other skills like yourself that they can uh you know, potentially go into the medical field rather than um, dentistry at the moment? Or are you one of the few uh, doing this? Yeah, so, you're, uh, yeah, Crystal, so I've got, I'm a partner in, and we've got six uh, dental clinics around Scotland and, and really we, we basically shut down. So we've got around 50 sort of support staff, 20, 20 plus dentists. And to be honest, most of them are, are just are really scared. They don't know what to do. I'm not sure individually if they've got other skills that they can then kind of call on. But to be honest, a lot of people are using this time to spend time with family, just to catch up in reading, writing. But they're worried. Right. They're really worried. We're we're dealing and with I've that as well here in the United States. Um, so many, so many people have lost their jobs. So many people don't know what to do, how to pay their rent. You know, everybody is really stressed out. So, and where, where? Yeah, I, I, I sorry, I think it's, it is important to, you know, we've got really good community spirit here within the profession and when it, within the local community. We've got to stick together. It's important to look after your neighbor, important to look after elderly people at this time who may be. Are, are stuck in the house absolutely because the government's also told people at high risk and the elderly over 70 years old to, to stay indoors to not go out at all mm-hmm. so it's important to to stick together to help each other in any way we can hence i'm fortunate that i've got a lot of skills so i'm like yeah i'll go and do that uh, because there's a lack of doctors 
but we've got to help each other at this time. And we'll, we will get through it and we'll, we'll be stronger on the other side. But we've got to remain positive as well. It's very easy to get down and feel low about the current situation. But, you know, we've been through a lot worse. I think this is the perfect time to endorse what we learned in the UK and saying things like, I am strong, I am courageous, I am enough, I will be okay. You know, this is the time to adapt the, for the culture to, I know it's scary and I know there's a lot of cer- uncertainty everywhere and none, none of us were expecting something like this. But definitely um, sending good vibes and, like you said, helping one another. And then a lot of people are seeking a lot of education to learn new skills, to learn uh, new things that they can potentially do for themselves, for their families, for their own lives. So uh, for a hand for you, there's an opportunity for you as well as for what you're doing um, as far as your family in the dentistry uh, world. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're, we're fortunate in this day and age. We've got the internet. We're able to connect. You're in San Diego. I'm in Scotland. We can chat about our own our, our situation. We've been fortunate that, that a lot of the Chinese doctors have come over to Italy to help them, to support them through the crisis in Italy. We've been getting advice in the UK from the situation in Italy and the situation in Spain to see if we can learn from it because we're a bit behind. So we're so connected in this day and age that, you know, if you're at home, you're not really alone. You're, on, you're, you're, you're connected to billions of people around the world. You can learn new skills. You can teach people new skills through Facebook Live, Instagram Live, LinkedIn, Snapchat, whatever social media platform you want to use. It's so freely available that we can really help one another in, in many ways. So really, there's no excuse. Definitely. Um, what has the Scotland government ha- have done to try to help you guys out? Are they, are they giving you guys checks to help you with your your mortgage or your rent? Yeah. So ex- excellent question. Yeah, certainly the the government ha- have stepped up to a degree, and there is financial support. Uh, we've been and the banks have been sympathetic and. If you apply to the bank, they, they will put your mortgage, they will give you a holiday. So certainly the, the government are working hard to support the public financially because they have to. Uh, there's a, you know, they absolutely have to. Otherwise, I think there'd be total chaos. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. But my, my real worry is obviously you're, you're, you're we're fully aware that that we're leaving the European Union at the end of this year. So we've been through a bit of turmoil in the UK. But my other worry is that this crisis that we're facing, I think will really affect the next generation because it's very well giving giving money to the public to help them. But the government really doesn't have the money to help us. And all their all they're doing is printing money or borrowing it, and and it'll need to be given back, and it'll be the public to give it back. Yeah, definitely. I think a lot of, <clears throat> a lot of governments are doing that. They just, you know, they don't have money, so they just either print it yeah. or borrow it, and then we just later on somehow this has got to get paid back. Yeah. So you know, yeah, as much as I want the government to help people help them through this difficult time, I'm also fully aware that. It'll be, it'll be the public that give it back through taxes, et cetera, et cetera. And, and it's usually the middle class that are, are, are more often than not heavily penalised mm-hmm. when it comes to taxation because it's not the big corporations. They always have a way of getting away without paying a fair amount of tax. Definitely. Uh, this, uh, two things come to mind, Doctor. Uh, the first thing is, since there's a shortage of masks around the world, why are we not seeing new developments with masks that can be uh, recycled or re- actually reused, maybe through washing rather than disposable? 
absolutely the truth. 